Mind Fetters, welcome to your great 12 Learn Extra Life Life Sciences show on a Wednesday. I am Looney. What's up? Are you still Looney? Yes. I haven't recovered. Never. <laughs> Mind Fetters, welcome. <laughs> How are oh. you, Aslam? I'm always good. I missed Hi. you for a while. Yes, haven't seen you in ages. But sometimes no, absence makes the heart, heart grow, grow fonder, fonder, you know. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> what are we doing for the Mind Fetters today? Today we are looking at plant hormones. Okay. Plant hormones. That's right. All right. Mind setters, we are not alone here. Aslam and I, we have two special guests in the studio. You know, Aslam likes to bring his entourage and his people. <laughs> he likes to come here and just chill with us. So today, who are you? Wanda. Hello. <laughs> hey, how are you doing? <laughs> I'm good. How are you guys doing? Hi. Uh, we're good. So tell us who you guys are, where you're from, what you are doing here. Okay, my name is Wanda. Yes. I school at Amitimo Secondary. I live in Kahiso, Extension 12. And my yeah. name is Mtuduzi. I also school with him. I live in Kahiso also. And we're All doing right. plant hormones today. Plant, so. plant hormones. Guys, are you excited? Mm. Yep, Very. pretty much. <laughs> Very excited. <laughs> I see you guys don't have notes in front of you. So you're geniuses. You've got everything in your head. You're going to answer all the questions. Yeah, we've got a great teacher. Oh, okay, okay, <laughs> okay. We see you, Aslam. We see you. We see you. Chop it. <laughs> My I, set is, we, I got we a big stick there in the classroom. We don't need to worry today. We've got two geniuses in studio with Aslam. We're going to help us with the questions. Remember to hit us up on Facebook on facebook.com forward slash learn extra. And our Twitter handle is at learn extra. And if you want all the show notes, the videos, and the schedules, you go to learn.mindset.co.za. And you get all your stuff there, all right? And then if you want to win yourself this awesome Casio calculator, all you need to do is finish the Test Yourself competition. And all the information is on our Facebook page. I'll post a link to the entry form. You fill in all your details. You get all the answers correct. You submit your answers, and then you'll stand a chance to win this awesome calculator. Remember, guys, you have until next week, Wednesday, 8 a.m., to enter this competition. So you can watch the show. And then you can just do your things and then enter the competition. We also have another competition going on. If you check out our Facebook page, it's called Get Connected. So we want you guys to vote for your favorite teachers to stand a chance to win airtime prizes and a Sony Xperia L. So all you need to do is go to our Facebook page. There's a link there that take you to, takes you to Curio. You enter a QR code LEARN. And then after entering that, you pick your favorite teacher. There are teachers there. You select your favorite teacher. Then you go back to our Facebook page. There are links there with the teacher's name. So if you've chosen Martin or Wilson, you go to Wilson. Then it will take you to a picture of that teacher. You like that picture. And then you share the post. You share the competition post. And then all those people who have shared the competition post will stand a chance to win airtime from Vodacom. And then all those people who got the correct teacher with the most likes will get sent through to a lucky draw where you will stand a chance to win a Sony Xperia L. So many competitions because we want, we've got your back guys. We want you guys to, you know, excel and do, have fun and win end time and everything. Aslam! That's it, that's it, that's it. A hey, lot of competition. I know, yeah? I've been talking, hey? Head time, eh? Yeah? I want that <laughs> one. <laughs> Plant hormones, guys. Uh, a small section in the syllabus and I, I tend to uh, put this hormones in inverted commas because many scientists say that plant hormones are not true hormones and we'll come to that a little later uh, we rather refer to them as plant growth substances but your syllabus prescribes plant hormones so we will accept that and for the purposes of this show and for the syllabus we'll continue calling them plant hormones. You can do some googling on that and you'll understand what I'm talking about. What are we actually going to be doing? In this lesson we want to explore the functions of auxins, gibberellins and abscisic acid. We also want to Describe the role, the specific role of auxins in geotropism and phototropism. With this is another term called tropism, and our friends are going to tell us just now what's the difference. And we also want to describe how hormones can control weeds in the garden. And we want to know how each of the following 
are used by plants as defense mechanisms to protect themselves, as chemicals and thorns. This is not part of this topic, this last outcome, if you want to call it, that we are predicting for in this particular show. But we have done the nervous system, and we also spoke about animal hormones. Now we are talking about plant hormones. And if you take all these three topics, they deal with response of organisms to stimuli. So we want to compare the actions of this. Remember, when we did the nervous system and we did animal hormones, we compared uh, nervous system to hormones, animal hormones. Now we are saying we want to compare all three of them. Interesting. Good. And uh, for our guests, Wanda and Mdu, and the listeners, the viewers out there, the challenge <coughs> question. And guys, this one is a real challenge one. Let's see if you can come up with reasonable answers for this one. First of all, what is the plant coleoptile? Now, this is not just an ordinary straight from the textbook answer. You needed to think about this because your teacher would have spoken about this in explaining some of the things. What is the coleoptile? And why does the removal of the coleoptile extremity the tip of the coleoptile, disallow plant growth. In other words, why if we remove this coleoptile, the plant doesn't grow? That's what we want to know, guys. Right? So think about that one. Secondly, and although we're using the word coleoptile, I have included in this explanation a few hints, and if you were sharp enough, you would have picked up that hint, and that's going to help you to answer the question. Second question, what are synthetic auxins? What are synthetic auxins and what are their uses? What do we use them for? The synthetic auxins. And in our intro again, we have made some mention to the use elsewhere. So you need to think about that. So we're not going to answer that. That's at the back of your mind. And don't be so nervous, guys. I'm not I got it already. Don't be nervous. Because you're making me scared when you're so nervous. You're shaking there. <laughs> Luni, you're watching them. I'm looking they look at nervous, the, eh? Yeah, they're so tense. Such big boys, yeah. and they're looking like they're nervous. <laughs> That's not they're going to tell us you want to go to the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> and we're going to make problems here, man. All right. Here's our summary, guys. First of all, we need to know the characteristics of hormones in general. And we've done that in class, guys. They are chemical messengers. They normally secreted in one area and acts in another area. And that is why we're saying that plant hormones are not true, true hormones. hormones. Why? Because where do they act? At the same place that they, they act very close to or in the same area where they are secreted. This is where the distinction comes. Normal hormones, they are secreted from a target, uh, from, a, from, from an, uh, the gland, and they act on a target organ or target cells. These plant chemicals, they secrete it in the same area and they, uh, uh, they act close by. Generally, they are required in small quantities and generally, the effects are long-term and slow as opposed to the nervous system where when you are Quick. listening to me, it's happening? No. Now. Good? All right, we've spoken about that already. Why plant hormones are not true hormones? We've spoken about that. What responses do these plants do for us? One is in development, they can assist. For example, they bring about dormancy. They also bring about germination. These are two opposite things, remember that. What does dormancy mean, guys? It means that inactive. An inactive, a period of inactivity. And germination, we will all know, is when the plant, the seed germinates to a plant, flowering, and growth. These are uh, the responses that these hormones bring about. And when we're going to growth, we are interested in the growth called tropisms. By the way, what's a tropism? 
Trophism is slow planned response either towards which is positive trophism or away which is negative trophism from away the source from? of a stimuli. A stimuli. Oh, excellent, 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 Lou. So he's saying that tropism is a plant response in relation to, to make it general without going to so many words, in relation to a stimulus. Why did we say light or gravity there? Because it wasn't included. It was not included in this word. This word is a general word, tropism. When we add photo, then that stimulus is? To, uh, reaction to light. Light. When we add geo, that reaction to? Gravity. Gravity, excellent. Hydro? Water. 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 Sigma? Ah. Temperature. No. Sigma. So. Touch, touch, touch. Okay. <laughs> Remember, with this one we just went through fast. Remember, however, that these two we don't study. We're just mentioning it so that you know there are others. We can also add here chemotropism to any other chemical. But we are interested in these two here. These are the guys we are interested in. Good? Are we happy? There we go, there. Giving you even more clo uh, clues. Phototropism, hydrotropism, geotropism there. Just some explanation. Positive tropism will be towards, and our friend Du gave us this already in the start. If it's going towards the stimulus, it's positive. Again, away from the stimulus, it's negative. The main plant growth substances are, and we mentioned this in the start already, oxygens, also known as IAA, indole acetic acid, Gibberellins, gibberellic acid, abscisic acid, ethylene, and cytokinins. Which of these five prescribed in the exam guideline? The first three. The first mm -hmm. three. You don't have to even mention the names. Good. Excellent. The first three we need to know. One, two, and three. These are the three we need to know. What do we need to know? We need to know the names. We need to know their functions. And especially with oxygen, we need to know the role in photo and geotropism. Excellent. So far, we're doing well, guys. Just in continuing with our summary stuff, we've just listed on a table the functions of oxygen. So we're not going to put you on the spot. We've put the answer for you there already. It's cell division, cell elongation, and growth in the stem length. The development of fruit. It inhibits the abscission of leaves and fruit. Abscission? It's when leaves and fruits uh, fall off the tree. Falling off. Abscission is just a big word, which means falling off the tree. Or depart. Or depart. Depart. You see, this guy is a uh, words man. You see, you were right. Uh, mm. Genius. <laughs> Genius. You're writing test tomorrow, I'm, I'm hoping. No, they'll pass. They'll pass. They don't have notes in front of them. <laughs> they they have 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 photographic in memory. <laughs> right. Development of adventitious roots in stem cuttings. This is now in an artificial sense. We can spray the oxygen onto a stem cutting. That means we've cut the stem of a plant. We spray the oxygen. It will allow the growth of adventitious roots. After the adventitious grow, uh, roots grow, we can then plant this into suitable soil that can become a new rose tree or whatever plant you're using. Tropic movement, we've spoken about this already. And last but not least, apical dominance. We're talking about that later, so we'll come back to that. In terms of gibberellums, stem elongation, uh, root growth, the germination of seeds, promotes flowering, budding, and fruit development. And the last one, abscisic acid, causes dormancy in apical and lateral buds in winter. Why in winter? Because um, the tree must be dormant and must not grow at that uh, time. Because it uses little bit of water and energy. So mm -hmm. And in that time, there is how much water? A lot or less? Less. Yes, because in winter, there's going to be less water in certain countries. Remember, in certain countries, get winter rainfall. It's going to be a bit different. But more than that, it's cold. And if the plant grows too much, those parts that grow will die, etc., with frost and snow and the rest of it. So this one here keeps it dormant, so it's expending as little energy as possible for its life processes. Control seed dormancy by inhibiting germination. This one is germinate, uh, allowing for germination. That one is inhibiting germination. Remember that. 
accelerates abscission. This one stops abscission. That one is promoting abscission. It promotes the dropping of the leaves and the fruit from the tree. It also stimulates the closing of stomata in most plant species. Again, with our story there, phototropism, we've already explained it. The pictures just to tell you the story. There we see plant growing straight up. Here it's growing towards the light, so positive phototropic there. Uh, these ones here, we'll come back to just now. Ah, I love that one. <laughs> and, and, and that's something that we need to think about. Why does the stem grow towards the light? We'll talk about that a little later. Uh, let's just go back one. Okay, so let's go back to this guy. Look what's happening here now. We're having a situation where we have an impermeable mica there and a permeable agar. Before we go for the break, I want you to think about why this one is growing towards the light and this one with the impermeable mica is still growing straight up. When we get back, Luni. Mindsetters, let's take a very quick break and we'll see you straight after this. <laughs> Welcome back, Mindsetters, from that break. Just a reminder, guys, to enter and start playing the SA Water Game. So all you need to do is visit www.watergame.co.za. It is a turn-based game that helps you learn more about water conversation. Conversation. Hey. Conservation. <laughs> hey. Ooh, hey. English. Water conservation. And it also wants to know what you think about the water issues in South Africa. You can play as many times as you want to beat your previous score, and there are many airtime prizes and various other prizes to be won during the process of the game. You have until the 18th of August to play the SA Water Game. So visit www.watergame.co.za. Yeah, English. Aslam. Thank you, Rooney. Yeah. Just remember grade 12, grade 12, playing that water game, how is it going to help you? Besides winning the prize? Uh, conserving water. Conserving water, and where does that fall into our big picture in our life sciences? Oh, um... Under? In the section that we're doing right now. And that is? Water let me say availability. So water availability and water quality under the section human impact, which is a repeat from grade 11, and it counts for about 25 marks at the end of the year. 25 marks at the end of the year in paper one. Remember that. So if you're playing that game, you're going to sharpen your skills on the very section that is also in the paper. Not to say that the water quality will be there or whatever, but the human impact as a whole is tested there and water is an important uh, resource, so we need to look at it. So we're saying here, we have these two shoots. In the one, we have a permeable agar, that's the clue, a permeable agar, and the other one, we have an impermeable mica, mica wood or any other plastic structure, etc. we can put in there, it could be steel, we can put anything, the key being impermeable. Why, guys, does this one go straight up and that one bends towards the light? The auxins are in the apical bud. Right, so and in the left one in A? The, the auxins can go through because it's permeable. Good. The auxins can go through here. Permeable means to allow the substance to pass through. So the auxins can go through. They will concentrate on the back, causing what again on that side? Cell elongation. Cell elongation and cell division. So therefore, this side grows? Tilted right. towards the light. No, this side grows compared to this side. Grows? Oh, upwards. No, more, isn't it? Yes. It grows faster here and slower on this side because there's more auxins on this side. Therefore, it then goes goes towards bends the light. towards the light. We say that the stem is positively, positively phototrophic. phototrophic. Okay? Keep your sentences small, short, and simple. That explains the whole of phototropism, by the way. And on this side, what's the problem here? It's impermeable. So that means the auxins cannot penetrate and therefore this plant is fooled to thinking that it's getting light from all sides because the auxins distribution is not uneven anymore. It's the uneven distribution of auxins which causes the plant to bend towards or away from something. That's the bottom line here. Okay? 
Uh, let's move on. The same story there. We'll come back. I got a question on this one later, so we'll come back to that. Okay. Some practicals that you may come across demonstrating phototropism, for example, we have a box. Inside we put a plant and we put a little, or we make a hole, sorry. We make a hole on one side where light comes in. Notice the word they're using, unilateral. Uni, one, lateral, side. side. One side, light from one side. Excellent, guys. So therefore, you can see what's happening. Because it's getting light from one side, the stems are bending towards the light. In this particular case now, we make this a control. We add this equipment called a clinostat, which in reality is a platform with a rotating disc on the top onto which the plant sits. And we wind, it has a wind up, we wind it so that this thing keeps rotating. Why do we make it rotate again? To fool the plant into thinking that it's getting light from all sides. Good, to fool the plant to think that it's getting light from all the sides. And therefore, this plant grows straight upwards because the ox You know the story now. All right. And in complete darkness, it will also grow up. In, in addition to that, these plants will grow thin and tall. But that's got nothing to do with what we are doing, and we're not going to go into a discussion because then we're going to confuse you. But the fact that in complete darkness, it's going to go straight light because it can't go to a straight up, not light, straight up. Okay, good. And in our geotropism, now the next one. If we lie a plant flat like this, what's going to happen to the auxins? Where are they going to be concentrated? At the bottom. Let's get a nice color. Eh? At the bottom. At the bottom, no? There, yes? All the auxins will settle there. You agree? Yes. In other words, like this, no? Not under the plant, here inside, but at the bottom. Why at the bottom? Why not on top? Gravity. Gravity. Under the influence of gravity, the oxygen settle at the bottom. So now what happens? There's a high concentration of oxygen at the bottom and a low concentration of oxygen on the top. Now this is where the trick comes in. In the shoot, as we learned just now, in the shoot, in the stem, a high percentage of oxygen, what does it do? It stimulates... Genius. Cell division, division and, and cell elongation. elongation. So what happens? Here is it stimulating it here, and therefore the stem bends upwards. Right. Notice you can't talk about bending towards the light here. Why not? Because you're talking about geotrophism. And because what you can't see here? Uh, light. What can't you see? The There's light. no light. Nowhere light. in this whole board are they talking about light. Yes, the light is shining on the board. That's a different story now. <laughs> but in this experiment, we're not talking about light. So whenever you're answering here, your answer is going to be towards or away from gravity. gravity. So we say that the stem is growing away from gravity, so therefore it will be what geotropic? Positive. Uh, posi no, negatively. Away. away. Negative. Negative. Negatively. Oh. Negatively geotropic. However, the root, on the other hand, as we can see, is growing Positive. towards. So therefore it is positively po geotropic. But now what the hell? Here we're saying, this guy has had high concentration here, it caused this thing to go up. Here, we're saying it got high concentration, but it caused the thing to go down. Why? Because in roots, the auxins um, stop growth. A high concentration of auxins in the root inhibits mm -hmm. growth. So therefore, this side grows slower than top side. So top side goes downside. And we need this. Why? Why must the root grow downwards, by the way? In order for the roots to be in, in, to be inside the soil, anchored, anchored and what inside else? The soil. What else does it get from the soil? Nutrients. Nutrients and more importantly, water. 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 So it's going down in search of water and minerals, and at the same time, when it goes down, it anchors the plant in firmly, so the plant takes nicely uh, rooted in the in, in in the soil. Good, excellent, guys. You guys are doing well. Okay, there's another diagram showing the same story and some more. Uh, Experiments here now showing the geotropism. We leave the plants now horizontal, and obviously uh, the the root will grow downwards, and the shoot will grow upwards, upwards just like in the other, as the picture shows here as well. Yes, okay. I'm not going to discuss that. Uh, apical dominance here now. Apical dominance means that as long as the apical meristem is in place, what does it do? 
inhibits the growth of lateral branches. It inhibits the growth of lateral branches. In other words, it stops the growth of lateral branches. As you can see in this diagram here. Here's our apical meristem cut off a little bit there, but it's not cut off literally. Our diagram just got cut off. Can you see the lateral buds there? They're not growing. Okay? In diagram two, we have cut off the apical bud. We have removed it. What has happened to the lateral branches? They start growing. growing. So that's what we mean by apical dominance. If the apical bud is there, the side branches won't grow because the main purpose of the plant is to try to grow up as high as possible to get light. Now, if we want to make the, bra uh, the, the plant grow sideways, what must we do? Cut the we apical cut the apical bud. buds. In other words, we trim on the top so the plant will grow sideways. Mm -hmm. Good, there's some more examples of that. And still on our summary, fighting back. Here's these guys, they're saying, sir, it's the office plants, they've got a group together to form a garden. Here is a list of their demands, okay? They've got their own union now, the plants. This is what this lady is telling us. So our idea is, how do plants protect themselves? They don't talk and so on. So one is, by physical barriers like thorns and spines, and we're not going to discuss the story, just pictures, remember what I told you. And secondly, by chemical barriers, either they are ta distasteful, they don't taste nice, or they are Toxic. poisonous. Okay, and there's a diagram to show you that. These things are on your page, you can look at it. Let's get to the nitty gritty now. Now you have to be sharp, guys. <laughs> you see, state three functions of each of the following plant hormones. The first one being auxins. Give me a function quickly. One. Cell division. Cell division. Um, uh, cell elongation. Cell elongation. Good. That's two for a start. So let's go through it quickly. Cell division. Those are the first two that you should mention. Cell division, cell elongation, or growth in stem length. Development of fruit inhibits abscission of leaves and fruit. Development of adventitious roots. Tropic movements. Apical dominance. These are the functions of oxen. Right? Let's start with gibberellins. Let's see if we can get two quick ones. I already gave it to you. <laughs> Stem elongation Stem as well. Elongation, root growth, root growth germination, germination of seeds, and promoting flowering, budding, and fruit development. Abscisic acid, before we give the answer? Um, it slows down growth. Slows down growth, and therefore it, it, it slows another process. Incredible. Stops what? Um, gibberellin so starts that process. This yeah. one stops it. What's that? Of the seeds. Oh, Quickly, germination. Germination, good. That's good enough that you gave me two. We'll use those two, right? One is it causes dominance, slows it down. As Mdu said, it also inhibits germination. It accelerates abscission in leaves. It encourages the leaves and fruit to fall down, okay? And in some plants, it causes the stomata to close. Good. A student grew a plant in an upright pot. She then put the pot in a horizontal position and left the plant in a dark for two days. Diagram three shows the potted plant after two days in the dark. Okay, so there's diagram one, two, and three. Plant after two days in the dark. Explain why the plant responded in this way. What are we going to talk about? Auxins. What are you going to tell me about auxins? Geotrophism. What are you going to tell me about auxins first? That in this horizontal position, what happened to the auxins? At the bottom of the it. auxins settled at the bottom because of gravity. gravity. Not geotrophism, but because gravity. of gravity. And in the shoot, because we're only seeing the shoot, are we seeing the root here? No. No. So we can only talk about the shoot. shoot. In the shoot, the auxins, a high concentration cause stimulated growth. Okay. So this part, the bottom side, grew faster, faster than the side on top. Therefore, the plant bent upwards. upwards. We say that the shoot is Negative negatively geotrophic. Okay? Under the influence of gravity, we said that already. Oxen settled to the bottom of the root and the shoot. In the shoot, because we're only seeing the shoot, in the shoot, a high concentration of oxen stimulates cell division and cell elongation.
Thus, the ventral side of the chute, the bottom side in this case, grew faster than the dorsal side, the top side. And the chute bends upwards, it is negatively geotropic. Notice how we keep our sentences separate. Why? Because we don't want to muddle our answers. We want our answer to make sense to anybody that reads it. Right, describe how plants use each of the following as a defense mechanism. Chemicals? In the taste and... Either it's a bad taste or the, plant, the animal won't eat it or... It's toxic. It's toxic, meaning it is poisonous, poisonous. and it will kill the plant or harm uh, the animal, mm. sorry, or harm the animal. Good? Which are distasteful, poisonous, or sometimes very difficult to eat or digest. Sometimes they, the, the chemicals make the food undigestible and therefore the plant, the animal will eat and eat and eat, but it will die of starvation because it cannot digest the food. All right? Thorns, that's easy, right? I'm just going to mm -hmm. open it up for you. Many plants have thorns on their stems and leaves to discourage animal. The animal is going to get hurt. hurt when it eats this plant. Good. What is the phenomenon of apical dominance in plants? How can it be artificially eliminated? What is the phenomenon of apical dominance in plants? And you already explained that to me earlier, Mdu. What's uh, apical dominance again? Uh, when a shoot apex is growing and inhibits the growth of lateral parts. The tip of the growing point or the apical meristem, when it is there, the auxins inhibit the growth of lateral branches. And how can we artificially eliminate this process? By removing the apical bud. By removing the apical bud, by cutting the apical bud. All right? So apical dominance is the phenomenon through which very high oxygen concentrations <coughs> due to oxygen from the apical bud moving downward the stem inhibits the growth. This is the key. Where very high oxygen concentration inhibits the growth of the lateral buds of the plant. Okay? The growth of tree branches can be stimulated preventing the apical dominance through the removal of the apical bud. Cut it off. Hmm? Good? Excellent. Now an investigation question, my favorite ones. Investigations were conducted to determine the effect of unilateral light on the stem growth. The following diagrams illustrate the results of the investigation. If I had to ask you two guys now, I didn't have it here on the question, but I want to add this question. What's the aim of this experiment? It's given in the stem. It's given in the stem here. Mm. To see if the effects of unilateral light on the stem growth. Yes, it's here. Yes, it. To determine the effect yes. of unilateral light on stem growth. Or if you want to put it in your own words, to see the effect of showing the plant light from one side only. That's what we are talking about there. All right, so there they're giving you now. Now look what's happening. They give you A, B, C, D, E, F, G. A, the tip was removed. Let's use another color so we can see it. Pink. Tip is removed. Here, tip is covered by an opaque cap. Opaque does not allow light to pass through. Second one, transparent cap will allow light to pass through. D, the base is covered by an opaque cap. Not the tip, but the base. E, it's separated by a jelly block. F, by a plastic block. And G, we put this hormone on the extreme right-hand side of that cut stem. We cut the stem, but we take some hormone and we put it on half of that stem. This is what we are doing. So let's start. Name the hormone responsible for the above growth movements. That's easy. Oxen. Oxen. That's an easy question, right? Oxen. What is the term used to describe plant growth movements in response to light stimulus? Phototrophism. Phototropism. Good. Can you say negative or positive? Uh, let me see. Uh, Not no, in this question, no, no, yes? No, yes? Good. Because they didn't ask you for towards. In response. Explain the results A to D. From A to D we need to explain. Now I'm going to go through this with you guys, right? For time reasons. A, the tub was removed. You will remember from the picture. So no oxygen. Thus it carries on going straight so, yeah. up. Second one is opaque 
does not allow light to pass through. Notice you're explaining the result. You're saying what is happening. Here's it. It's growing straight up. You're telling us what's happening. Mm -hmm. But you have to explain that result. Why? Because it does not allow light to pass through. True. I'm hoping we're together, guys. Yes. C is a transparent cap, so it allows light to pass through, so the stem bends towards the light. And D, the base is covered, so the tip is not affected, thus the stem bends towards the light. The, the tip of the stem is still uh, receiving light, and with that we go to blue. <laughs> I'm rubbing off you, Ian, you see Aslam. I'm getting crazy <laughs> like you. <laughs> Mindset is just a quick congratulations goes out to Dimpoma Panga. You have won yourself a Casio calculator Ooh. from the Test Yourself competition. Remember, Mindset is I posted all the details about the competition on our Facebook page. So if you want to enter and be like Dimpo and win a calculator, go to Facebook, check the details out, test yourself, and you have until Wednesday to enter. But that said, let's take a very quick break and I'll see you straight after this. Welcome back, Mindset is from that break. I'm not going to waste your time. Awesome! Come on, yes. <laughs> oh, welcome back, Mindset is welcome back, learners. Uh, yep. Our special guest. Just, I, I read one comment there that uh, our teacher is going very fast today. So I'm going to slow down. I, need, I, fa I was fast in this last segment just to finish before the ad break, guys. I'm going to go back to this one on the diagram now. They said you must explain the results from there to there. So notice here the stem tip was removed. So therefore, because there's no oxygen from the stem tip, this plant carries on going to, uh, straight. Now notice what the question said, explain the results. So what was the result? It's growing straight, that's the result. What is the result? What you can see, the observation. It's going straight, but you need to explain that. Why? Because the tip is cut off, no oxygen is going down, simple. The next one, it's also growing straight up. Why? No light is entering. No light is entering the tip, and that's where the oxygens are. So the oxygens are not getting the message. Second, the, the third one is bending towards the light. Why? Because light can go through. Light can go through because it's transparent. And D, the base is covered, so it doesn't affect the plant because we are interested in the tip. growing tip, the apical marrow stem and therefore it's growing that way. So there, I did that again with you, so you can't say it's too fast now. Suggest a reason for the different responses in E and F. We have to go back to the diagram. Here's E, it's got a plate, but it's growing towards the light. And here's F, it's got a plate, but it's going straight up. So the responses are the F is going straight up, and E is going towards the light. Why is this difference? The jelly is permeable. Exactly. The jelly is permeable, so it allows oxygens to go on that side and instabulate growth. Whereas here, the plastic is impermeable. impermeable, so the oxygens don't get through, so therefore this plant will continue to grow that way. And the last question, I'm going to open that question. I'm not going to read it again. We've already said that. And if the source of light is removed or changed, if the source, this is a bit of a heavy question, so you need to think about it. If the source of light is removed or changed, will the result change in G? Explain. If we change the size light source, we take this light source and we put it there, or we remove the light, will this plant bend differently? Yes, yes. or no first? Yes. Yes? Yes. 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 Okay, explain. Bec the result will still be the same because the auxins are placed on one side alone, which will Why stimulate... Why did you say just the, 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 the thing will change? Now you're saying the result oh. will remain the same. Are you listening to this guy? Okay, okay. The result will still stay the same because... The result will stay the same because no matter... Remember, it doesn't have a growing tip, right? And we have placed the auxin in mm. a particular side. So we've placed the auxin on this side. So probably, remember, and this can change also, because although we've placed the oxygen on that side, oxygen can diffuse also. It can diffuse to the other side. So there's a yes, no, both ways you can, you can, you can actually answer it in long term. Okay? If you're going to say no, you're going to say because we put that oxygen there. 
If you're going to say yes, you can, you're going to have to back it up to say that the auxins may, although they're on this side, they may go, move, because normally auxins move away from the light. So let's stick rather with the second answer, that it will change. Because in the presence of light, the auxins will move away from the light. Good? Are you okay with it? Good. Let's move on. Next question. This is a long one. An investigation was carried out to determine the effect of two plant hormones, A and B, on the accumulation of starch in the cells of tobacco plants. Notice, on the accumulation of starch. The investigation was set up as follows. They used 30 tobacco plants of the same species, the same size, and the same age they were used. They were divided into three groups, each treated in a different way as follows. Group 1, 10 with hormone A. Group 2, hormone B. Group 3, no treatment. All the plants were then left under the same conditions. The starch content in the cell was measured after every six hours for each group. The graph shows the results over a 48, period of 48 hours. So again, changes in the starch content of the three groups over 48 hours. Starch content and the units are given. Time and hours are given as the unit. The first solid line is group one. That was hormone A. Na? Group two, hormone B. Uh, now let's take, yeah, right. Remember this one was a long one with that one and then you got the short dashed lines. That's this one. Uh, let me get myself right here. This is, sorry, group three. This is group three, no? This one is group three. You see this key? Mm. So that becomes uh, no hormone. And this is hormone B. Actually, I, I think I could be wrong with the key there. I'm just about worried. Explain the purpose of group three in this investigation. Group three had no hormone. What would be the purpose? To use the, the control excellent, variable. Excellent, excellent. To act as a control to allow us to reason that there's any difference in starch content was due to the action of the hormones. Using the results in, in indicate the function of plant hormone A. You have to go back, yeah? It was plant hormone A, this one here. Well, what can be a reasonable function of hormone A? Now, it's not based on your theory. It's based on what we told you here. What has happened to plant hormone A, uh, uh, with hormone A in terms of starch storage? More or less? It stimulates starch, uh, the production of starch. Not production, but the storage. storage of starch. Remember, I was underlining that when I was doing it. Uh. So it will be the, it stimulates the accumulation or storage of starch. starch. Plant hormone B would be the opposite, opposite. because it, had, it didn't promote it. Provide a hypothesis for this investigation. I'm just going to open that up. Hormone A stimulates or does not mm. stimulate mm. the accumulation of starch in cells. Or you could have said hormone B stimulates mm. or does not. But you don't write stimulates, does not stimulate. This will be mm. giving you in a memo. That means if you said stimulate, we'll give you the mark. And if you say does not stimulate, we'll give you the mark. If you write both, that means you are not taking a stand. Then you can even have said we want to see the effect. Once you say you want to see the effect, there's not a hypothesis. That's an aim. Are we clear with it, guys? Right? Identify the independent variable in this investigation. Think of the graph. What did we have on the x-axis? Uh, starch. No. No, starch. no, time. Time. So time is the independent variable because that's what we changed. We changed time. We did not change the amount of starch. Explain how the reliability of the results could be improved. How could we reliability think about it in your mind? There's only two things must play in your mind when we talk of reliability. By having a control variable. No, that's now validity. <laughs> um, the same amount of the... No, validity. Remember, once we're talking about method, anything about method, it's validity. Mm -hmm. Reliability means... Tested over and over again. But what does it mean, reliability? That we can trust the results. Mm. The only way we can trust it, test it over we and test over it again. again, or we do it with more plants. plants. So what are the two things I told you must have in your mind? Repeat, increase the sample size. 
but now you need to contextualize it with this particular one. And that is, repeat the investigation to determine whether the results are consistent and or increase the sample size or use more plants to see whether the results remain the same. Are we clear with it, guys? Does it make a difference now in terms of validity? You mm -hmm. see, when you're talking about we must use the same thing and we must make sure that the equipment is right, etc., etc., et that's method. That's a validity. Validity means, is this thing testing what it was supposed to test? And was the method correct? Were there no mistakes in the method? That is validity. Then your result is valid. In, 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 if we put it in terms of school, if I tell you tomorrow we are writing on <laughs> evolution. Evolution. human evolution, but in a test, I test you on natural selection. Is the test valid? No. No, why not? Because it did not test what it aimed to test. Can you see that? Now, how do I know if your test marks are reliable? Remember, we don't talk of a test being reliable. We talk of the results being reliable. So how do I know your test marks are reliable? What must I do with your test? Get I'll somebody else re -mark it. to remark it. If more than one person gets the same marks, that means our scores are reliable. reliable. Can you see the difference now between the two things? So just a conclusion. I'm not going to waste your time with that one. Hormone A stimulates the accumulation of starch in cells, and hormone B does not promote the accumulation of starch in cells. Notice, very similar to the hypothesis, but our hypothesis could have been different. Uh, the last question, and then we move to the challenge, and then we'll go to some of our questions there. Compare, and I'm not going to waste too much time here, because we've done this before on the show, we've compared endocrine and nervous system. Now we're just adding one more column for the plant hormones. Compare plant hormones and the endocrine system and the nervous system. And we didn't say tabulate. Eh? So let's start here in plant hormones. Message is carried by hormone in water. water. In the animal? Carried in the blood. blood. And in the nervous system, it's carried by neurons. neurons. We're comparing apples with apples. Message, chemical in nature. In hormones, also chemical in nature. In neurons, nerve, impulse, and electrical, electrical in nature. Coming back, produced in specialized glands. This one? Uh, no. We went too far. Uh, produced in specialized glands. Where are we? What happened here? So, oh, we, we, oh, sorry. Produced throughout the plant, not in specialized glands. In the, in the hormones, they were produced in glands. So throughout the plant. Here, mainly affects local targets, nearby cells. In hormones, uh, in, in animal hormones, distant Most targets. Time. And here, Information travels quickly and it's local in nature generally, okay? Wide effects, this will also have wide effects, the top one, sorry, vary depending on and in terms of nervous system, nerve fibers, specific effects. When a nerve uh, impulse is initiated, the effects are specific. It doesn't have an effect on the whole body like a growth hormone or adrenaline or insulin, it has specific effects on it. And the effect normally is long term, and it takes a long time in both of the above, and here it is short term. So I've rushed through this last part because we've done it before, okay? Now coming to the story of the coleoptile, Wanda, you were, you, were, you were shining your eyes in it when, when <coughs> I asked the question and so on. You, any idea very quickly, I'm not gonna give you too much of time. Um, I think the coleoptile is the apical bud, and the removal of it will um, slow uh, the plant growth. Why? Uh, because without the auxins in the apical right, bud. So it's got part of the answer in terms of the auxins. It's not the apical meristem as such, but it is equivalent to the meristem because it's in the first shoot, before the plant actually becomes a big plant as such. Right? So the coleoptile is the first 
first of all what is the coleopter is the first maybe one or two aerial structure of the sprouting plant as the plant is germinating the part that's going up that is the coleopter so it has a similar structure and function to the apical but right. and you 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 rightly hit it on the button when you said about the auxins the top of the coleopter is the region where auxins are made so if we take it out plant growth stops so you are right there on the button there. And the second one, why are what are synthetic auxins and what are their uses? Synthetic auxins, synthetic means we made them artificially. And secondly, we can use them as weed killers, killers. or to grow adventitious roots on uh, stems, etc. Any question for me? One. Yes, one. What are the advantages of a period of, of dormancy? This is from Matebese, Sehopolo. Matebese. Yes. Matebese wants to know what's the advantage of the period of dormancy in plants or in a seed. Any quick? Dormancy way. In a seed. In a seed. Yeah. What's the advantage? Anybody? No. Uh. Advantage is that the seed, if it stays dormant, it won't grow in the wrong season. So if it normally will be in winter or something like that, so it would stay dormant, and when the better season comes, it comes out there. Ah, uh, Luni, sorry, that's all we have. Thank you so much, Aslam. Guys, quick shout outs. Fast, uh, wanna fast, I want to say shout fast. out to DS, my friends and family, my man Slice, Flake, and my man T.O.T. To my 12D soldiers. soldiers. <laughs> and <laughs> yeah, are they soldiers with days. Yeah. And my family and everybody who knows me from Amitimo Secondary. Thank you so much, guys, for tuning in. Remember, the Learn Extra Life Sciences Help Desk is proudly brought to you by Axel. Send your questions through there. We love you very much. Goodbye from us.